Good morning. Sorry for the uh, technical issue. So um, welcome to my talk about LinkedIn's observability data pipeline. Um, in today's work, uh, talk, I'm going to introduce the, um, the evolution of um, LinkedIn's observability data pipeline and how we uh, leverage the uh, open source and open standard to help this effort. So uh, first, a uh, quick agenda. Um, we'll start with uh, the um, observability data pipeline existing state status, and then um, what the issue associated with this uh, data pipeline. And then uh, we'll, uh, we'll introduce the uh, reanimation work we've been do doing for the open, uh, using with the open standard and open, uh, open uh, source tools. And finally, uh, the status and the summary. Uh, a brief introduction on myself. My name is Chow. Uh, I've been working in LinkedIn at uh, the um, observability team in the past few years um, with the emphasis of um, uh, logging and tracing data pipeline. And yes, and you can always find me at uh, LinkedIn. So you may or may not notice that in the past few years, we are entering an era of observability. So for any company with a distributing system, the observability becomes the critical support to provide um, the functionality for um, diagnosing, debugging, tracking, and detecting bottlenecks. So what is this observability? Um, there's many definitions. One of them is that um, it provides the insight and, uh, of the service runtime state or property in the distributing system. So what does that really mean? Um, it, it really means that um, in the high observability requirement, make it very necessary to provide um, sufficient context or insight for information about the system by combination of um, a few different and key types of information together so that you can get the information of the system. You can have the insight of the system. Um, the typical data that uh, we, we've been using or like the, the be mentioned is, uh, is, is uh, it's also called the pillars of the observability. Um, metrics, traces, logs uh, generally the, the most uh, common used pillars for the observability. So how does uh, the observability look at LinkedIn? Uh, there's no exception at LinkedIn. For years, uh, we build up uh, observability data pipeline to collect different insight and informations into the distributing system. Um, we have logs, we have uh, graphs, we call it in graphs. We have um, um, trace information we, ca we, we can leverage and uh, look through the, uh, some application called Qualtree. We have a lot of other tools built around them. However, since this, this system was designed and uh, evolved and maintained by different teams many years ago, most of the tools built around this, this um, data is, is like isolated and they, can, they cannot um, like um, interoperate between different databases to get more insight for, out of the data. To meet the ever increasing um, requirement of uh, data traffic, we, um, LinkedIn has um, started several projects in the past few years, trying to improve this situation. Uh, let's first look into what the uh, previous or like ex existing data pipeline looks like. Starting from tracing, um, um, this, this uh, data pipeline has been uh, around for almost 10 years. An application emitted a um, message called service call event into Kafka. And those data finally ATL'd into Hadoop for ingestion. 
uh, there's uh, uh, applications built around the Hadoop for uh, offline uh, exploring and analytics uh, uh, operations. Um, the pipeline was developed like many years ago. Therefore, um, it, it at that moment uh, the uh, the scale of the LinkedIn's data data is still like in, in very um, small at that moment. So it quickly uh, reached to it in its limit. Um, we had we had to um, improve this by um, or like fix this by uh, cut down the, the traffic and doing the uh, uh, sampling of data, which limited the, um, the analytic capability of this data pipeline. Another thing is that we are using HDFS for uh, for the data stro storage. Um, HDFS is mostly used for, um, uh, primarily used for to support the offline um, support uh, offline uh, processing. Therefore, um, some of the uh, runtime issue cannot be immediately an analyzed and uh, and debugged, which is a, a big big limitation. Logging is uh, quite a different story. Um, many years ago, we had uh, an, an initiative to trying to build up the uh, build up uh, the uh, 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 some data to collect or to to collect data in, on different boxes and uh, pull them into a central place for for uh, querying and analysis. Um, the, the, that project was based on the um, some open uh, the ex external tools which end up a failure or like a very unsuccessful of this project because the, um, the scale that tool support cannot meet LinkedIn, LinkedIn's requirement. We have much, much larger, uh, larger requirement of the data pipeline. So um, for years, um, our engineer or like SRE has to log into the different um, uh, box or virtual, or virtual machine just trying to um, to, to grab or to 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 get the um, the the, the, um, the log message, so this uh, this situation was not uh, solved until recently when we started in log data pipeline project. Basically, we built our own data pipeline trying to uh, ingest the message. Um, the in log message, in log event message was emitted from application and sent to Kafka, and ultimately to Kusto which also known as Azure Data Explorer. So Kusto provide much better um, ingestion and uh, query capability and make, make it um, very like convenient for the, for the engineering to get the log messages, which is uh, it's a very uh, a great improvement. Um, there's one, uh, there's some limitation for this phase one project though. Um, one is that uh, we didn't, um, Provide the full capaci uh, capacity to uh, to accommodate all the log messages, which means that we only have um, uh, wording and error message in ingested for and uh, for for use. Um, this somehow limited the capability of the uh, the data, whole data pipeline. Another limitation is that uh, only Java application has um, uh, the capability to do the uh, data emission. So that's an another thing we like to improve. Um, Metrics data pipeline is not the focus for uh, my today's work, so I'm just uh, quickly touch upon the um, of, of, of it and to tell a um, uh, very brief story of, of it. So we have similar data pipeline that a service a service metrics event is emitted from application. Um, that can go direct to Kafka or go through a uh, service called AMF to Kafka. This data was um, then directly emitted to uh, T, uh, TSDS, which is time series data stro storage. We have a series of um, tools built around this and to visualize, to generate alerting, generate a lot of different data or oh, an analysis tool. So um, I'd like to first to, 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 to summarize that what um, is the issue for our existing data pipeline and how, how we want then how we want to improve this. The the first issue is obviously that we have um, duplicated data pipeline that has similar components with different implementations, which cause a lot of maintenance burden, 
and uh, also the the tools built around all this data are isolated so we cannot share like uh, using the same tool to access different type of data another issue is that uh, and linkedin kafka is the only java uh, java is the only language that is supported um, fully supported in all this data pipeline. Other language, uh, Python, Go, uh, C++, um, generally do not have the instrumentation capability, so they cannot leverage the data pipeline. Um, the, th the third issue, as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, um, we have the uh, uh, capacity issue uh, for, for all this design that for logging, we only allow um, the warning and, and our error message to, uh, to emit it. And for tracing, we have to do the sampling because of the, the limitation. To address all these issues, um, LinkedIn decided to renovate the data pipeline with uh, the consolidated data uh, the consol to, to consolidate some of the components. So here's the, the proposed um, solution. We started with um, um, generate the new data pipeline that um, can fit both um, tracing and logging. Kuslo again is, is being used as the uh, data storage, um, which can provide, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, the efficiency um, of of query as well as like ingestion. Another part is that we are introduced open source standard, which is open telemetry into our system for help the instrumentation of the application. Um, open OTEL can, can easily help us to, for the instrumentation of different language. That, that is a one, one big issue we, we've been seeing. The third part is that we uh, introduce a new component, component called observability agent. Um, observability agent will help to some of the common, um, common functionality like um, data collecting, uh, conversion, uh, and, and also like the, um, um, encoding. This, this part, um, we actually use uh, Fluentbit for this purpose. We're going to introduce more of, of all these changes in the next few of slides. Starting from open telemetry, um, I'm, I'm sure everyone here, here is already, already familiar with what open telemetry standard is. So we leverage open telemetry in both the, the tracing standards, tracing, tracing schema, as well as the, some of the SDKs. Um, um, with open telemetry, we can easily instrument multiple language um, applications. This, this is a big advantage. Another part is open tele telemetry also provides a lot of choices for external um, tools, utilities that we can let direct leverage. Uh, I, I think uh, Jaeger was mentioned earlier, we actually evaluate this, this tool. There's some other tools we also looked into in the past. If you look at the, the um, flu, uh, if you look at the open telemetry data pipeline, an important um, component called uh, open OTL uh, collector sitting in the, in the middle. Um, open tele, uh, OTL uh, collector will help to receive, process, and expo export telemetry data to its back end. And at LinkedIn, we also need this, this type of um, uh, agent. We call it observability agent. Um, this agent not only support the OTEL, like the co conventional functionality, we also want to, it to support like so, some of the other um, functionality like uh, data conversion, filtering, as well as the monitoring of functionality. So, um, Observability agent can support client with different language because this is a standalone um, 
process that can sit aside to uh, of of the application. So, uh, applications language really doesn't matter any, anymore in this case. And, and another advantage of this probably is not obvious to uh, most people. Um, the separate process have the resource and operation isolation that we look for, look forward. That which means that if something goes wrong with the network, if something wrong goes with uh, wrong with the uh, the collector, uh, the main application will not not affected. So, as I mentioned earlier, Fluid was chosen as the observability uh, observability agent. Um, this decision was uh, was made like for a lot of people's surprise, because um, OTL, uh, OTL SDK already provide several implementation of the collector. We didn't choose that. Uh, we 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 made the decision even before we became aware of that Fluentbit will support open uh, open telemetry. So why we made this decision? Um, there are several reasons. Um, the first reason, as I mentioned, uh, if you look at the past uh, few slides, um, we have um, Kafka sitting as our chosen main data backbone. So any output want to go through Kafka, and um, Flumbit provide a lot of different uh, plugins to support different customization, including Kafka. This gives us a lot of advantage using, using Flumbit to, to directly get the, this capability. Another part is that um, logging streaming is the first cl uh, class citizen in Flumbit, and we are doing this in log improvement, and we need the uh, logging support immediately. And when we uh, when we started this project, uh, the um, open telemetry logging is still in its early uh, alpha phase. So we didn't choose um, the uh, hotel collect. This is another reason. Um, another uh, one more reason. The third reason is that a Fluentbit is using uh, written in C, which is resource efficient and uh, with, uh, with high performance and uh, building resilience guarantee. Um, this is very convenient for us to deploy, from, deploy it in, in thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of boxes because this uh, efficiency is, is, will be magnitude bigger or like it's multiplied with the number of the, the, the nodes we are going to deploy. Uh, last but not least, um, Flumbit has been used uh, in a lot of different companies, in, including LinkedIn already. This will make many people feel comf comf comfortable to use an a proven solution. Um, based on all this reason, we choose um, our Flumbit as our uh, like observability agent. Obviously, um, we cannot use the Flumbit out of box um, because it, is, it was not the observability uh, uh, hotel agent yet. So we have to do a bunch of enhancement and improvement. The first sub, uh, improvement we added was uh, like the uh, open telemetry protocol support. Um, th that's the, um, the, uh, the basically the, the open hotel uh, exporter need to talk to the agent that can understand its language. And open tele telemetry protocol was the standard. And we add the uh, O open telemetry protocol over HTTP support with uh, protobuf um, encoding in it. So, that's, that's the, the, the first uh, enhancement we added. Next, uh, we also um, enhanced the, uh, the metrics emission mechanism inside Flumbit. Uh, Flumbit by itself is already have the um, the, the building uh, monitoring mechanism that already support so supported by external through external tools like um, Prometheus I think I mentioned earlier, and and this is like the more like a pulling a method in the, um, used by Prometheus, but uh, in LinkedIn we, we are going to deploy this in. Uh, a lot of different nodes and pooling methods does not work well for our use case. So 
we want to uh, adapt this uh, uh, matrix man monitoring mechanism into our LinkedIn's own uh, uh, matrix collection uh, flow. That's where we add the adapter. Um, uh, the adapter trying to convert some of the, the matrix information into LinkedIn's own uh, format and immediately to a central place so that we can have, um, we can have our own uh, matrix um, pipeline and collect the data and visualize the, the results, which can also support uh, um, the alerting or like uh, or not other monitoring uh, mechanism. So another thing we, we, we enhanced for LinkedIn is the, uh, the tag management. Um, for most people probably already know that tag is used by Fluentbit for the streaming management. Because we have now more complicated data pipeline, we need um, a more stronger functionality in, ter in terms of uh, um, the tag so that we can pass some of the information directly from the, from the, uh, the client, the, the exporter to um, to the uh, to Fluentbit without decoding the data, that's that that part was was uh, done through the, the the tag management. One subtle issue that hasn't been noticed by many people, but did, we, but that caused a lot of discussion inside the company is is that what the deployment model we should have for Fluentbit. Um, there are two choices like uh, we, we, we've been thinking. One is like per box de 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 uh, deploying. That is we, for each box or like the Kubernetes nodes, we have one copy of um, Fluentbit running there and collect information. Another is like per instance, for example, like you have each application instance, you have one copy of Fluentbit sit aside with it. And um, there's a pros and cons of each approach that's why this, this, this caused a lot of discussion. So for, um, for per instance, it has the advantage of like, uh, um, it has the advantage of like the, um, uh, can better like resource and error isolation. It can avoid the, the noisy neighbor, neighboring problem that we've been seeing in our like the on-prem, um, um, data center, and it make the configuration and um, configuration and the monitoring easier. Uh, this is this is obviously like um, if you have multiple instances running on the same ho host, and you have the port management issue that if if you have uh, you, you you have the the per box deployment model used. On the other hand, per box has the uh, uh, has the advantage of. Uh, um, of uh, less resource usage, right? And less nodes to, uh, less uh, agent or less instance to, uh, to manage. So um, we have a lot of discussion and uh, it seems that uh, the per instance deployment model was the preferred like to, and we, we like to go that direction to get her to, to have better isolation and simplified, um, simplified configuration and monitoring. But uh, not all tools or like environments support this. So we end up with like a hybrid solution that uh, when, whenever possible, we'll deploy Fluentbit as per, box, uh, per instance. For example, like um, for the uh, Kubernetes, um, we have the side, sidecar set support, and then we are using um, uh, per, no, uh, per part deployment model. But for some other uh, environment like in LinkedIn, we, can, we also support like per box deployment. So um, with all this enhancement, where we are now for, the, for this project? Um, Fluentbit agent uh, is now already rolled out in, in, in a lot of box in, in the company. We are in the process of the rollout, uh, the enhanced Fluentbit to all the box in, in, in the company. And uh, the, 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 currently it's not fully in, enabled in, in terms of configuration, but it's sitting there waiting for the traffic from the different applications. Distributed chasing project, um, we are, uh, have some pilot application chosen that is uh, already start to emit their tracing information and to collect the, info, uh, collect the data. And for logging, um, 
as I mentioned, we have like previous phase of uh, locking, which already have Java in, uh, enabled. Now we are, have um, uh, some uh, selected uh, Python applications um, to start the immediate login message. Okay, um, a quick summary of, of, the, uh, of the talk I had um, today. So I introduced the, uh, the um, consolidated uh, data pipeline in LinkedIn to support both logging and tracing. There are other works that has, uh, by, by my team is, is been doing as well. So I haven't got a chance to discuss them. They are equally important and hopefully in the future I can introduce more of them. Um, this, this, include, um, the, this effort include like the data partitioning for better correlation and uh, inquiries and uh, visualization. We're going to introduce a new visualization tool to handle the distributing data. And also, we are also in the design phase of data sampling and querying, uh, data sampling as well. This is mostly for query efficiency as well as uh, like the lower the, the cost. And, uh, and, and, and we've been always trying to optimize different components to make it more efficient and, um, um, and running more smoothly. So with that, I think and that's all talk I'm, uh, I'm going to have. Um, I'm open for any question. For speaker. Thank you. And let's, let's see if we have time for a question. Yeah, one question. Anyone would like to ask? Hi, uh, you said you've made enhancement to, um, to FluentBit. Uh, will you open a PR with those enhancements? Will you send it back again to this project or you keep it in-house? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? You said you've made enhancement, if I understood correctly, to Fluent Bit to yes. improve with your own data, data I suppose. Yes. Yeah. Uh, will you open a PR to the project and send it back again to this uh, project, or will you keep it in house? Well, actually, so there's a couple of different different enhancement. Some of the, the enhancement we are going to contribute back to the to the open co community, like to, uh, that is use, useful for everyone. Like some of the uh, arrow enhancement, the bug fix, and some of the the tag tag management. But uh, some other part is like thinking only like spe specific. We are doing the conversion internally. Like, nobody our world will need that. We are not going to uh, to send them back to to open source. Great. Um, yeah, and I think it's time for a break. So thank you very much again. Thank you.